Hi, I want to tell you about one way to multiply vector quantities together. It's called the scalar product. It's sometimes also called the dot product. I'll, I'll um, oscillate between these two, the scalar product or the dot product. It's called the scalar product because when you multiply two vectors using the scalar product, you get a scalar quantity. It's also called the dot product because you use a dot to represent the, um, the multiplication of the two. Okay, so just to review, um, last year you learned how to add vectors. And um, when did you add vectors? Maybe to find the net force, you added F1 plus F2 plus F3. You also learned how to subtract vectors. Uh, why was that important? Maybe to find delta V is equal to V final minus V initial. So you need to be able to subtract vectors. We've also um, multiplied and divided a vector by a scalar. Um, you know, anytime you do F net equals MA, the M is a scalar quantity, the A is a vector quantity, and the F net will always be in the same, that vector will always be in the same direction as that vector. The scalar just changes the, the size of the vector and the units. So momentum and V are always in the same direction, always. And um, this one is divided by a scalar, but you can still count on the fact that A and delta V are always in the same direction. So dividing by a scalar or multiplying by a scalar um, is, not, is not too difficult at all. But I'd like to tell you about two ways to that we multiply vectors. The two ways that we'll multiply vectors um, have to do with the fact, the reason why we have two ways is because um, there are two reasons that we would multiply vectors. Sometimes the vectors we're multiplying, the only part that matters is the part of the, of the one vector that's in the direction, the same direction as the other one. So like work, when you do work on a box, the only part of your force that causes it to change its position might be the, um, might be the component of this force that's in this direction. Whereas when you're trying to open up a door, now we're looking, this is the axis of the door, and um, here's the doorknob, and you're pushing with that force on the doorknob, a distance S, a displacement S away from the axis of the door. That's the door. So when um, you do that, the door will swing open. It's going to swing open like this. But you know, the only part of the force that, that gives you that that twist of the door is the part that's perpendicular to s. So I'm going to mall to get that's that's going to be a quantity called torque. And the only part of the force that matters is the par part that's perpendicular to s. So we use the cross product when perpendicular matters. That's the cross product. Don't know why I put a dot there. It's just there's no dot there. It's the cross product, and that's that's when um, we only want the part of the force that's perpendicular to s times s. But we use the dot product when the only part of the force that matters is the part that's parallel to s. So that would be this part, the part that's parallel to S. We'll come back to this one uh, later on when we get into rotational motion. That's what that door is doing. It's rotating around the axis. But for right now, work has a lot to do with the dot product. So let's get into the dot product. Okay, imagine that I have a force that's doing some work on an object and the force is 5 newtons, and it displaces the object 4 meters. Well, the only part of the force that matters is the force that's in the direction of S. So I'm going to tell you that the work done by, by F, that's going to just equal the part of the force that's parallel to S. And so the way we write that is we say it's the F dot, the dot product, times S. Notice that that gives you a scalar. I'm not putting a vector over here. So that's giving me a scalar quantity. And the, the way I will do this then is 
I only want the part of what this, the way you should look at this is if you want to get, that's a W, I'm sorry. If you want to get the work done, that's a W. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the part of F that's, that's in the same direction as S, so parallel to S. just the magnitude of that, and then I'll multiply it by the magnitude of S. That's all I'm gonna do. So um, if you think about that, this is, I just want this part of F. This part of F doesn't matter at all for work. You can get rid of it, but this part does. And so that turns into the work is equal to um, five Newtons, times the cosine of the cosine of 36.9 degrees that gives me the parallel component to s times s which is 4 meters so in general whenever you do an a dot b that will give you the way you get that is it's just the magnitude of a times the cosine of theta, the cosine of the angle between the two when they're at tail to tail, times B. Sometimes people write that this way though, it, it's the same thing. It's just A, I won't put a vector over, so that just means magnitude B, times the cosine of theta. Okay, so you, that's what gives you just the component of, that gives you the, the component of A that's in the direction of B times B. Okay, but what if they're already in unit vectors? So this is that same problem we just did, but now um, what if I were giving them in unit vectors? So if I broke that up, it'd be 4 newtons in the I direction plus 3 newtons in the J direction. So when I do the dot product now, I might do something like this, F dot S is equal to, um, I'm just going to put 4 newtons in the I direction plus 3 newtons in the J direction dot 4 meters in the I direction plus 0 meters, excuse me, 4 meters in the I direction plus 0 meters in the J direction. Let's go ahead and foil this in where you do, where you multiply the 4 newtons times both these components. When I do that, look what happens. 4 newtons in the I direction, 4 newtons in the I direction plus 4 meters in the I direction gives me 16 newton meters because how much of this 4 is in the direction of, uh, 4 newtons is in the direction of 4 meters? Well, that's in the positive x direction, and that is 2. So you take the entire component, you take the entire amount, 4 newtons, because um, it's all in this direction. And whenever you m multiply an i times an i, you get rid it becomes a scalar quantity. So I'm just going to say that's 16 newton meters. Plus... When I multiply, when I foil this into the other side, that's going to be zero. Plus, let me foil this one in. Now, you might think that this wouldn't be zero, but it is zero. Again, because how much of this component, how much of, of this is parallel to this? Well, the J is in the Y direction, and this is in the X direction. So when I do the dot product here, I'm going to get zero. 3 newtons J dot... 4 meters I is 0 because they are uh, perpendicular to each other. So that's 0. Plus, and when I do this, I get 0. So that's, um, that gives, because, just because uh, that's, that's 0 meters. So the, the amount of work done by this force is 16 Newton meters. So here's the point. When you do the scalar product with with um, unit vectors, you really just add, you multiply the i's together, and then add that to the j's multiplied together, and then, and if you have some z's, you can, you can multiply those together and, and then add them.